Financial advisory has always been a really big part of my life. In fact, the practice that I'm a part of now was established by my father around the time that I was born. I remember working at the office in the summers when I was in high school, undergrad, and even grad school. I started off labeling files, to helping with meeting prep, to sitting in on some of the meetings to assist, to ultimately becoming a fully licensed financial advisor and insurance advisor with clients of my own. Little did I know that when I was labeling files and working in the summer, that that would shape such a big part of the career path that I would take later in life. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Ostemir, and I'm a financial advisor. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because today I want to share with you my story, my story of how I got into this field. Interestingly enough, when I started undergrad, my intention was to become a doctor. I was taking science classes and I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I remember my first day of chemistry class when the professor looked at the room and said, everyone here probably wants to be a doctor, but the reality is only about one in 10 of you will actually go into med school. And I thought, well, obviously I'll be one of those people. Now, I started to pursue that path, but ultimately figured out that that wasn't what I wanted to invest more time and energy into. So having completed an undergrad in science, the question was, well, now what? That's when I started talking to my parents who had always steered me in the right direction. And they recommended that I go on to get my MBA to learn a little bit more about the business world. So I applied for the co-op program at McMaster University and was accepted into their MBA program. I started my MBA in the fall of 2008. And we all know what happened in the fall of 2008. It was really the first time that I started to grasp the value of money and what it meant to lose money and the volatility of the financial markets. Being in the co-op program, I did have a lot of trouble finding that first co-op role because a lot of companies weren't hiring. I was very fortunate that I eventually found an unpaid internship at a hedge fund in Toronto. It was a great experience and I certainly learned a lot. I did work a few different jobs while I was in the co-op program at McMaster. And when I graduated, I did get a position with an investment banking firm in their equipment finance division. I really liked it there. I liked the people I worked with and I liked the role that I was doing. But like most people my age, I was always looking for that next big opportunity. And I found one with a Canadian bank. I moved over to the bank and ultimately decided that that wasn't the world for me. I think one of my main takeaways at this part of my career is that culture is really important. And as much as I loved both places, I also realized that I loved working directly with clients and I didn't necessarily have that opportunity in the second role that I had taken. It was the fall of 2015 that my dad came to me and asked if I wanted to join his firm. The company was growing and they were looking to hire another financial advisor. Given my background that I had in the financial market, it seemed like it could be a good fit. I was a little bit worried at the time. In 2015, robo-advisors were very popular and I wasn't sure if people would still be looking for advice moving forward from financial advisors. In 2016, I joined the firm. I also gave birth to my daughter that same year. So 2016 was a very big year for me. Now, looking back on that moment, um, I'm so happy that I decided to make the jump into the world of financial advisory, and I see that I'm still able to help people. I love being with clients and learning about what's going on in their world and getting updated on what's going on in their life. Being able to share with them what's going on in their portfolios and the progress they're making towards their goals is extremely rewarding. By having a plan in place and goals in mind, we're able to structure a portfolio that will help them reach those goals and continue to make smart decisions with their money. Sometimes when I first meet with new clients, they're really not sure if they're making the right decisions with their money or if they're invested in the right things because no one's really taken the time to review it with them. My team and I spend a lot of time educating our clients and letting them know why we're recommending the things that we are. It's a really great feeling for a client to tell me that they're starting to feel a lot more control of their finances and feel a lot more confident about their future. To know that they are so happy and satisfied with the work that we have done for them that they're willing to refer us to someone else that they think could use our help. That really motivates me. Some tips for success in this field are staying engaged and providing the best service possible. Actually understanding what's going on in our clients' lives and proactively reaching out when we need to make a change to the portfolio is really important. I like to look at the client's complete picture, which might include assets that they hold outside of our firm, either at another broker or through their employer savings plans. Just because we might not manage all these assets doesn't mean we should be ignoring them when we make recommendations. Because at the end of the day, all the client's assets are gonna have to work together to fund their future goals. I always like to tell clients that we're definitely gonna have some good days, but we might also have some bad days. I mean, look at 2022, for example. And just because it's a bad year or a bad day doesn't necessarily mean we sell everything and exit the market. We have a plan in place and there's a reason we're sticking to it and we're going to stick to it even during choppy waters. 20 years from now, I still want to be my client's go-to person for financial advice. 
I want my clients to fully understand why and how they are invested, for them to feel good about the decisions that we've made together and how it is all working together to get them to where they want to be. When someone asks them how they're invested or what their retirement plan is, I want them to know the answer. As your advisor, I will be with you for the long haul, through the good days and the bad days. I am your go-to person when you have a concern about the economy or need advice on a big financial decision. I'm Jacqueline Ozdemir, and this is my story. To continue following me on this journey, be sure to subscribe. If you liked this video, leave a comment and a thumbs up. I'd love to hear about your journeys too. Thank you for watching.